The concept of trading bots might be fairly new for some of you, as for you, trading might look something like frantically rushing to the charts in the morning to plot out your support and resistances before the markets open and really getting your trading plan organized for the whole day. For me, it looks something like I wake up, I grab a coffee, and I'm just checking how my bots have performed overnight. And more and more frequently now, my bot systems that I have, I have several bots that I have running, they're all running fairly well in the current market conditions. So I'll wake up and I'll be excited that my bots have made profit for me overnight. But before I get to the strategy in this video, I wanted to introduce Pinex to you guys, who's giving away a total of $10,000 to the first 100 people who sign up using the link down in the description and automated strategy on their platform. And it's fairly easy to do. Pinex is the ultimate crypto exchange for automating strategy. They allow you to completely automate your trades with just a few simple clicks. Here's how to get started. Sign up for Pinex using the link down in the description, click on trade, navigate down to signal bot, click on tutorial and read the full step-by-step instructions for how to link your TradingView account and then simply activate it. For the first 100 users who sign up using the referral down in the description and successfully send a custom signal, you'll easily get 100 USDT deposited into your Pinex wallet as a reward. So don't wait, sign up now and start trading with Pinex. And if you're looking for a functional strategy to use on Pinex, I have tons of available ones in the working script section of my Discord server. You can even use the script that I'm about to discuss in this video. All the links are down in the description to do that. And I have more profitable ones on my Patreon. Now when it comes to to trading bots and trading in general, there is so much to know. It's fairly complicated. If it was really, really easy, a lot of people would be doing it. There's not exactly a clear, get rich, easy, quick scheme unless you get really lucky. And if you're an early investor in crypto, for example, you might have done fairly well. But after you take profit, if you don't really understand technical analysis, what do you do next? Oftentimes, you might see a project that, like SafeMoon, that went completely to zero. So if you were involved in an early crypto success and you built up your portfolio, it's hard to keep that profit rolling. And that's where I feel like having a good coherent plan comes into play. And for me, my plan is to have a back-tested system that also has forward testing going into it and relying on the stats and numbers that that system has in place and trusting that they're gonna carry forward into the future. Trade anxiety is one of the biggest problems and issues that I had early on into my trading career. So when I discovered that you could use automated trading systems, I was immediately excited about them. But at the time, the only communities really available for this kind of thing that I was really excited about were really niche communities on Reddit. And a lot of that information was gate kept with a lock and key. So on this channel, I wanna bring that information to you in a really compact and easy to understand way. So if you think that interests you, hit the like and subscribe button on this video now and turn on all bell notifications. I'm always trying new strategies and introducing new concepts and improved systems that I wanna share with the community. And one of those trading systems that I have released, this is an open source script that I have on TradingView. This is an Ichimoku bot that I really love and it's close and dear to my heart. And I was able to develop this trading system with ChatGPT. It helped me build the strategy rule set. If you want to go back and look at that video, I have it right here on the screen now. And this system in backtesting has made over 26,000% profit just in backtesting. If this was running all the way back to 2021, this system would have made 1,500 trades and won over 66% of its total trades. So this specific code, you can find this in my trading discord. If you click the link down in the description, there's a discord link. You can grab access to all of the open source scripts that I have. Once you have that all set up, you can head into the working scripts tab and the very first post is the trade tactics full scripts category. And I've posted a bunch of open source scripts that you can come and grab. All you gotta do to use these is click the download button on the right hand corner. You can also grab an improved version of the strategy on my Patreon channel. And all you gotta do is subscribe for $25 a month or above. And I offer coaching and one-on-one -on -one help as well. And if getting into all the code that's here is too much for you, if that's going over your head, then don't worry. You can subscribe to this exact bot that I have on my trading view screen on Pinex. All you gotta do to subscribe to this bot is head over to Pinex. The link is down in the description and I've supplied the link to this exact bot. So you can click it and then copy it in one click. Today we're adapting the strategy for different crypto coins. So I'm gonna be showing you how to tune the strategy for different assets. This is the FXS crypto coin. And if I go to different timeframes, you'll notice that some of the strategy results are gonna change. So if I'm on the 30 minute timeframe right now, and I switch over to the 25 minute timeframe, the profit 
differs a little bit. So the drawdown, that's the hypothetical loss that the strategy would have incurred, went up slightly and the profit dropped as well. And if I go to the other side of the 30 minute, if I go up to the one hour time frame, it's still profitable, but it's further away from that time frame that I dialed these settings in for. So it's less profitable as well. So I could tune this strategy for any coin or time frame. This strategy works really well in markets that have breakouts. So crypto is one of those really good markets that has a frequent amount of breakouts. It's also really good at trading in the correct direction. As soon as the market makes a clear choice, it's usually always in the dump as soon as the dump starts happening. And it's also in the huge pumps as well. All of these longs were amazing secured profits. And over time, this has made the bot on average win 66% of the time. So let's see what happens if I head over to the Ethereum chart from the FXS chart. If I wanted to use this on a different coin, I could just type in the Ethereum chart, head over to the 30 minute time frame on Ethereum, and you can see so I'm on the Ethereum USDT chart and the results are significantly different. So I could take the time to tune the Ichimoku cloud for the specific volume on the Ethereum 30 minute time frame. For this video, I'm gonna be tuning this strategy for the Rune USDT coin. And I picked Rune because one, I really like the coin. I like trading Rune. And there's a fairly healthy sample size that's fairly close to the results that I had over on the FXS chart. So I'm gonna have to do less heavy lifting to get this strategy off the ground and make it profitable on this coin. The first thing on this chart that my eyes are drawn to are the percent profitability, that's 62%, and the net profit is 110% profitable. And the other thing is the max drawdown, 61% is far too high, so I'm gonna get that as low as possible as well. This green chart on the bottom of my screen, I can time travel back to this area on the chart and I can tell exactly when the, this coin was the most profitable and when this bot did not perform as well. So everything to the right of this time period right there highlighted on the chart in the middle of the screen is the time when the drawdown went up significantly and the net profit dropped on this bot quite drastically as well. So we're going to try to improve that. To the right of that trade, as soon as the profit started dropping, there was a whopping sideways market back and forth. And only about here is when the bot started profiting again. This is when the market tipped over and completely went for a huge dump and this bot made massive gains during all of these shorts. So you can click every peak or valley to time travel to the areas where your bot is performing the best or the worst. And those are good areas to look for building good rule sets. If there's a particular weak area uh, or particular market that your bot doesn't perform in, you can build rule sets that target that specific area. Today, I'm gonna dial in the specific settings that are tuned for this volume on this chart on this time frame. So I'm gonna show you quickly how I grabbed this strategy. On the Trade Tactics Discord, I've navigated to the full scripts. And all I have to do is click this download button on the right hand side of my screen. It's going to open up a text file and this is the full script. I'm gonna need all of this. So I'm gonna select all on my keyboard. It's control A is the shortcut for that. And then control copy to copy all of that. You can also do that by right clicking, copy, paste, select all. You can do that as well. Once I have that, I'm gonna close this and head back to trading view. The pine editor is what I'm gonna need for this. So to grab this, I'm gonna click open and I'm gonna build a new indicator or strategy. Everything in this box, I'm gonna delete so it's completely blank, and then I'm gonna hit Control V for paste, or I can right click paste just like this. Now that it's all pasted in, I can hit save and add to chart, and there shouldn't be any errors. If you got any errors, then you did not correctly download and copy and paste the full script. So make sure that you have every line you need, every single line, including the version equals five, all the way to the very end where there's the long and short conditions and the strategy close conditions right here. These are really important. Now, once you have this on your chart, you can head to any time frame on any coin and tune this strategy for the specific volume that's traded on that specific time frame. So I'm hovering my mouse on the left hand side of my screen on the top left, and there's an eyeball here. I can toggle the strategy on or off, and I can toggle the results on or off. And next to that is the settings. So if I wanted to open the source code, I would just click these squigglies here, and I can edit the rules on the bottom of the chart, but that's gonna be in a future video building uh, 
comprehensive rule sets. I'm just opening up the settings right now. So these are the default settings. You might not have the exact configurations depending on which one that I have. I'm constantly uploading and updating these settings. And these settings are fairly easy to play around with and keep playing around with until you get a configuration that you're satisfied with. So on this strategy, the first three boxes here are useful and the last one, the lagging span is not going to affect our strategy results. So it doesn't matter what you change the lagging span to, that's not going to affect the entries on the indicator. So it's these three settings here, as well as the take profit and stop loss. If I turn off this take profit stop loss, you'll see that the strategy results are massively different. There's less trades and the net profit went up to over 2000%. But if I turn it back on, it's dropped down to around 1%. So I'm going to turn off the stop loss for now while I'm tuning. And that's going to be the last thing that I configure. Once I'm happy with all of the other settings, these first three, I'm going to apply a stop loss and I'm going to configure that last. Now the basic process is just by trial and error. So I'm going to change these one by one until I find a setting that is more profitable. So I'm going to change this setting down or up and I'm going to look at the strategy results. Once I find a combination of all three of these first three here, then I'm going to lock that in and hit save as default. So with the power of editing, I was able to cut out a lot of the trial and error there, but I was able to settle on this configuration for the first three. And this was just going through all three multiple times, going back to the first one, the second, the third one. And once I locked that in, I would go back to the first one, find if there's a more profitable configuration. And sometimes I would bump it up to a dramatically higher number just to see what's going on. So if I put this seven to 50, we would see radically different results here. And if I go back this lines, all the lines on the chart are going to change dramatically. So the last thing is going to be the stop loss and take profit. So I'm going to change both of these just to a wide range just to start to see what happens when I change this to 20 and 20, the drawdown and the net profit change dramatically as well. So I'm going to turn on the stop loss and take profit. And I'm just changing these to stop at 100% and take profit at 100 as well, just to show that the range is as wide as it's going to be. Sometimes when coins recently drop, they have massive results right at the very beginning and the market conditions differ significantly as soon as a coin drops compared to when a coin has been on the market for a long time. The type of traders that typically trade on different coins or at different times, sometimes a coin becomes really popular. Maybe, for example, Dogecoin is a good example of this where Elon came in and he brought in a bunch of different types of investors. So as soon as he did that, there was probably a massive and dramatic change in the kinds of trends uh, support and resistance, the volume, and the types of EMAs or other indicators that that coin respected at that particular time. So at the very beginning of Bitcoin's existence, it was a lot more random. There wasn't a lot of institutional investors trading on it. So sometimes that data going all the way back to the beginning of Bitcoin's existence isn't necessarily the best data to train your bot using. Sometimes the more recent data can tell you more accurately what kind of investors are looking at each bot or each system at a different time. So looking really far back is also really good. If I turn on a deep back test and I select the first available day and I set it to select today and I generate this report, this data will go all the way back. But the question really is, is, is this data reliable for the current market? And so typically I employ a balance. I want to look at the deep backtesting results from far more recently. I typically will go fairly recent, maybe six months, and then I push it to a year and I'll do a deep pack test just six months back or a year back. And then I'll apply it again just to see how would the system work in the last six months, the last year, and then keep expanding that network of data until I have a fair balance between all of the different timeframes that I'm testing on. For example, I could test on a giant market collapse during, for example, the big collapse during the COVID crash, or I could select any kind of major pump that happened and just test how the bot performed on that specific time period on the chart. So to dial in the stop loss, that's going to be the last step here before we get our full results on this coin configuration. I'm going to set them 
to a fairly reasonable stop loss or take profit. Four or five is generally the largest that I'm willing to go on a stop loss unless I wanna trade more risky trades with lower leverage. So if I start off at five and five, this trading system, this trading system compounding since 2021 would have still been profitable. It was about 50% profitable and the average trade due to probably some more big candles that this bot system closed those trades after big candles and then opened up other trades continuously going up and up. So this bot is 50% profitable. And what that means is 50% of the trades it wins, 50% of the trades it loses. However, the bot actually closes its orders after the candle closes. So some of the candles might have bumped the profit well above the 5% take profit, and then it would close on the beginning of the next candle. That's just how TradingView calculates these calculations. So it's still a profitable system on 716 closed trades on this stop loss and take profit. So if I change both of these numbers to four, we'll notice a little bit different results. It's now become 51% profitable. So over time, it's actually winning more trades than it's losing. And if you flip a coin 100 times and you win 51% of the time, the odds are ever so slightly tipped in your favor. So while it's preferable to have a larger take profit level than your stop loss, meaning you want your risk to reward ratio to be favorable, some trading systems that I've deployed actually use a smaller take profit than stop loss. And you can calculate the risk to reward differently when you do that. So on average, if you have a wider stop loss and a smaller take profit, depending on the trading system that you have, at least on this one, the way that it works is a larger stop loss gives your trade a lot more room to breathe and bounce back and then eventually close in profit. So the drawdown and the total profit will actually increase as well as the percent profitability. So the net profit on this configuration is 65 5% profitable. So I'm going to round this just to an even number just for a quick example. So I have a configuration here with a 60% profitability. That means it wins 60% of the trades. So six out of 10 trades are going to win. To calculate the risk to reward on this trading setup, I'm going to add up 10 total trades. So I'm going to add up the total losses and compare them to the total wins in stop percentage amount. So the stop percent is four here. And if it's a 60% profitable bot system, I'm going to do four multiplied by four because there's 10 total trades in this sample calculating the risk to reward is going to be four times four. There's going to be six profitable trades. So I'm going to add 2.75, multiply that by six. And if it's greater than 16, which is the total loss of the system is approximately going to take and handle during that, then we would be in profit and we would have a favorable risk to reward ratio. So the ratio here for the loss is 16, and I need this 2.75 to be greater than the 16. So I'm gonna multiply 2.75 by six, and it's at 16.5. So this system is barely in profit, but over time, you could imagine this coin has only been active since 2021. If you had a trading system on this for several years, that 0.5 would make significant result. Imagine if you're at a casino and you could win 51% of the dice rolls. Now at the very beginning, you wouldn't really notice the results. You would win half of them. And then eventually as you hit a hundred, you would, you would have one greater win. Once you hit a thousand, you would have 10 greater wins. And once you had 10,000 total closed bets in, in this hypothetical, you would have over 100 total wins greater. So the way that I like to do it is I like to set up several different take profit and stop loss scenarios, and I will multiply the stop percentage by the total losing trades out of 10. So there's 60% win rate here. If we were at 70, that would mean you have seven complete profitable trades out of 10 and three losing ones. So I would add up. So if this number were 70, I would multiply the limit amount. This is the take profit amount, 2.75 times seven. And that number would have to be greater than the four times three. There's only, there's only three lost trades out of 10 if we were at 70% profitability. I hope that makes sense. And thanks to a trader in my Discord who posted some of the other settings that you could apply to the Ichimoku cloud. These default settings are tuned for the FXS 30 minute chart. I'm gonna add in the other settings 
these aren't necessarily the optimal settings. I'm going to edit this message here so you can also find the settings easily. These 4, 4, 40, and 20 are the ones that he used. I'm currently using 7, 31, and 50. So these first three are the ones that matter. The last one here, the 20, actually doesn't really matter at all, but the take profit and the stop loss do. So once you add up the risk to reward ratio, if you're in a profitable configuration and that 50% mark, if you're greater than that over time, your bot is going to be making profit. Of course, you have to factor in commission. The commission that I have in this system is 0.05%. That's just what my exchange charges. So I'm factoring in my specific exchanges commissions. I have to factor that in if you run the system enough times and history repeats itself from the back testing in forward testing, then you should be able to have a profitable system in theory. Hopefully that helped you understand risk to reward ratios and how to tune bots for different timeframes different configurations. I did do another video on how to automate this system, how to make these shorts that are opening on the chart here in backtesting, how to make those run in real time. I've posted that video in my Discord, but you can find a link right now. So click on that if you want to check how to set up your own trading bot system. Thanks for watching and subscribe to the channel.